What's going on guys? CTA Prime back here again. Today I kind of want to do a demo of RetroArch running on the Xbox One. Now this will work on the Xbox One, the Xbox One S, or the Xbox One X. This is very early in development. They actually announced this in December, but it's already come a long way. There is a catch to running this on the Xbox One. You have to have a Microsoft developer account, which is about $19. If you're a student, I heard rumor that you can get one for free, but I'm not sure about that. And your Xbox has to be in dev mode. When you're in dev mode, you cannot play retail games, but it's easy to switch back and forth between retail and dev. In this video, I'm just going to show off some MAME, Super Nintendo, PlayStation 1, Neo Geo, Genesis, Virtual Boy, TurboGrafx-16, Super Graphics, Game Boy Advance, and 32X. And hopefully in the future we can get support for Sega Saturn, Dreamcast, and even GameCube. But for now, this is what I have up and running. Let's go ahead and get into it. Alright, so here we are on the Xbox One's development dashboard. All I need to do is go down here and start RetroArch. So as you can see, it's using the XBM theme here. I did change the background out. And I've also installed a bunch of games to the internal hard drive. You do have to do this over network, kind of like transferring ROMs to your Raspberry Pi over your home network. First thing I want to test out here is PS1 using Tekken 3. Now remember, this is still very early. There are some PS1 games that will run at full speed, but Tekken 3 isn't one of them. I'm going to mess around with the settings a little bit, then we're going to move on to a PS1 game that does run at full speed. And then I'm just going to kind of breeze through all the other little emulators that I have here. The FPS is listed in the lower left hand corner. It takes about a second or two for it to update. So if you notice some slowdowns and that still says 60, just wait a little while and that will drop down. Round one, fight. So obviously we're not at full speed with Tekken 3. You can hear it and see it. Bloody Roar 2 is another one of those games that just won't run at full speed right now. So I'm going to go into the settings in just a second, and I'm going to turn frame skip on. Personally, I want to avoid frame skip as much as possible, but I just want to see how it performs here. I have the Xbox controller configured to where I press L3 and R3 at the same time. It'll bring me back into the menu. I can go into the options here, and I'm just going to turn frame skip to 1. So it sped up gameplay, but it looks real choppy to me, and that's what frame skip does. That's why I absolutely hate it. The Libretro team knows what they're doing, and they're on the right track here. So Tekken 3 doesn't run at full speed, Bloody Roar 2 doesn't, but Crash Bandicoot 2 and a lot of other games will. By the way, frame skip is turned off with this game. I got a lot of games to test here. I'm going to try to make this video as short as possible. I'm going to do 30 to 40 second clips here and there. The name of the game and the emulator used will be on screen. Thank you. 
So yeah, it's come a long way since the first time I tested it, which was only about a week ago as of making this video. But as you just saw, it covers a lot of emulators right now. We got Game Boy Advance, MAME, SNES, Game Boy. I didn't test any NES because that runs fine here. Genesis 32X, PC Engine, Super Graphics. And since this is an x86 platform, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't add PSP, Dreamcast, and even Dolphin for some GameCube emulation. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. As soon as there's a decent, stable release, I will be making a tutorial on how to install this. You obviously need to be in dev mode but it's really easy to do and you can swap between dev mode and retail mode very easily. If you could, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and like always, thanks for watching.